In this uh, presentation, what we're going to do is have a look at the Dixon Q test for outliers. Now, the Dixon Q test for outliers is, uh, as well as being a test for outliers, obviously, it's a very good test to sort of uh, procedure to get used to hypothesis testing uh, for the first time. So if you're, this is sort of a nice, simple introductory example. So if you're not used to hypothesis testing, Dixon Q test is a nice way to ease you into the whole process. So what we're going to hear, uh, do here is look at this data set here, and we have 12 items, okay? There's 12 elements there, so 12 items, that's important. N here is equal to 12, okay? And we want to sort of see if there's any outliers here. So what I'm going to do here is just go through the data and see what the minimum value is and the maximum value is. So there's actually, should we, we have 12, I, I just spread it out over two lines, it's not two separate data sets. So that seems to be the minimum, and 178 seems to be the maximum. Okay, so i got to sort of think, 118 is a little bit distant from the rest, okay? The rest seems to be 140, 150, 160, 170, but 118 seems to be quite low with regards, uh, quite small, uh, quite a small number by, by comparison to the rest. So I'm going to see if 118 is an outlier according to this test. Okay, so, um, but it could potentially be 178 there as well. So essentially what we might be interested in is the gap between that number and the next number here. So the second highest number is 170, so 178 to 170, and 170, to, that's not, this is not the outlier, 178, okay? But uh, 118 to the next lowest number, 137, that's a bit of a distance now, okay? So we're interested in the gap between the number and the next number here. So it might be handy there, just to write it out, 137, uh, 170, 178, okay? You can skip all the rest. So that is a gap there of 19 that's a gap of 8 essentially the difference between the two numbers okay so we're interested in these gaps okay that's how this test works uh, works on the basis of those gaps so um what we're going to do here is hypothesize that 118 is an outlier okay so first off we have a four step process here and the first step is formally state null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis okay oops so that's essentially and essentially this is why you actually would learn this test uh, just because it actually is just a sort of nice easy way of getting the hang of these so this is our first step state the hypotheses uh, so the second step will be compute the test statistic okay Conventionally, the next step is, if you're using co the confidence interval approach, is actually to sort of use, find out what the confidence interval is, so, so determine confidence interval. So you usually do that by using, like, looking at statistical tables, okay? So determine the critical value, okay? Now, this would depend on a couple of things, uh, particularly the level of significance. Now, I'm going to use a significance level here of 0 0.05, okay? So this is what they call significance, okay? And that's an important part of hypothesis testing. The next part I'm going to look at here is finally uh, the decision rule. Okay. Now I'm going to use a decision rule that sort of applies, or a sort of a system that applies across all types of hypothesis test. Is the absolute value of the test statistic, which is TS there, test statistic, and this being critical value, greater than the critical value okay if yes we reject the null hypothesis if no let me just make some more room there just back go back up there if no we now the wording here is important fail to reject that's the, the null hypothesis. Okay. So 
that's what we're doing here. Now, so, so let's do this. The first step is step one. Now, there's a couple of ways you can phrase this there. Now, but formally, you actually might sort of h zero is the sort of notation for the null hypothesis h zero. So, um, you, there's a couple of ways, different ways you can phrase it. But essentially, what we sort of say here is one one eight is not an out. Or actually, a better way would be saying there are no outliers present. Or you could also sort of say something like uh, 118 is not an outlier or something like that. But essentially the null hypothesis should say something along those lines. Now in some other examples you might have to actually write some mathematical notation but it's not sort of relevant in this case. Okay so we can actually just uh, leave it as that. There are no outliers present in this data. Okay. So you might rephrase that a bit or something like that, but ultimately just getting something along those lines gets the point across. Uh, the, no, the alternative is there is one outlier present, okay? And you can just say it's 118 or something like that, just the, the, mac, the, the minimum, okay? So that's the first step there is actually state the null and alternative hypothesis okay and again h0 is the null hypothesis and h1 is the alternative hypothesis and the null hypothesis usually expresses some sort of negative or absence or negate negative quality or an absence of something okay so it takes a lot of, a lot of practice to get the hang of the null, writing out the null hypothesis the second step step 2 is the act is the test statistic okay now in this bit it's a special type of test statistic for the Dixon test okay now the Dixon Q test so essentially what is we write the test test statistic is Q but we might add in a, a subscript there TS to say it's the test statistic this is the gap over the range okay now the gap is the gap between the our outlier and the next uh, lowest value okay and we earlier on we found that to be 137 let's just scroll back up there for a second just to check that so the gap here is uh, the the distance between our outlier and the next lowest value 137 it's going to be 19 the range is the entire the range of the data there so the range is essentially uh, 178 minus 118 okay so that's the range there so it's going to be 60 so essentially our test statistic is going to be 19 over 60 very simple 19 over 60 okay so you can work that out in your calculator it is roughly equal to 0 0.32 okay uh, something like that so it's just roughly equal to 0 0.32 okay something like that okay now the next part is the critical value so step three is the critical value okay now for this particular procedure what you have to do is also first off determine the significance level okay and we're going to pick 0 0.05 also known as five percent and this is our significance level, okay? Usually you're told to do this in the uh, in advance, and usually for undergraduate statistics, it's always 0 0.05, sometimes 0 0.01, but you're usually given some sort of indication. Okay, so what we do here is, I'm just gonna make more room here, is that we have to go to our tables. There's, go to tables. Let's write this in in black. That's not black. Okay, now if you're asked this question, you usually begin some sort of tables. So, it important. There we are, that's black. So, is the sample size. Okay, so essentially what we're going to do, deal with here, is I'll just draw it out. I'm going to pause this and just draw it out. So this is the statistical tables here, and essentially what I'm going to do here is I have to pick out, uh, well, I'm going to use this column here, so I'm going to use this column here, not 0.05, okay? So I'm going to use this column here, but I have to pick out a row, 
and this depends on the sample size n okay so what I'm going to do here is just go check back the start and we have a sample size there of 12 okay so that's this uh, row here okay now just actually you'll get confused by this later on because later on you might see that the sample size or the row to use is degrees of freedom which is sample size minus one not in this case it is simply n okay so anyway our test statistic here is not point four two six okay so that's our test statistic let's write it down here q which is again our uh, that's how we write our critical value sorry that's our not our test statistic that's our critical value okay this is what we're looking for the critical value is not 0.426 okay so that's good so our test statistic was not 0.32 our critical value is not 0.426 now the absolute value thing is not important here but essentially what we're doing here is is not 0.32 greater than not 0.426 the answer is no okay so what do we do in that case we will fail to reject the null hypothesis h0 being the null hypothesis null hypothesis okay so that's it altogether. Now, just actually important, one last thing. It's not about true or false. It's not about what is true or false, hypothesis testing. It's about how much evidence we have. That's a sort of slightly crude way of putting it, but it's sort of to sort of um, put you in a better direction than this idea it's, it's true or false it's about how much evidence we have to make it to back up a, a to support a statement some statement okay do you have enough evidence no we don't have enough evidence to say that okay that's what we're sort of getting at here okay so that's the Dixon Q test